Hello! Ooh, was, ooh, that was a good one. My name is Paul Third, and this week I have decided to go back to Nebula and can continue on my Nebula series. And basically, um, in a nutshell, the video that I did months ago talking about the history of Acoustical Audio Nebula, I'll put like a fucking link here and in the description as well, um, ended up getting um, on Google as the main video. So it's kind of, it gets very, very, very steady views. So when anybody types in Acoustical Audio Nebula, me, my <laughs> my unperfect little Scottish face comes up. So I thought, no, what, I better start doing more videos about Nebula. Now, something that I quite enjoy and I, I find it quite interesting is the ability to customise the GUIs of your Nebula libraries. Now, it doesn't matter which Nebula library it is. It could be um, third-party developers like Tim P, Tim Cupwise, Alex B and stuff like that. But it can also be the stock Nebula libraries that come with Nebula 4. And today I'm going to talk about basically the two main ways that you can customise your skins in Nebula and kind of get your own flavour in your own workflow and your own look to your plugins, alright? So, let's get into it. So, a bit of a background, okay? So when Acoustica Audio Nebula first came out, they all kind of had the same generalised skins and there's a PDF that I've got. Now, by the way, anything that I um, show you today, okay, I'm going to have links in the description for as much as physically possible, whether it be links to websites, links to files, I'll try and include as much in the description down below. So as you can see, the Nebula libraries all look the same and they looked really, 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 really boring. And the problem was that there was no way of customising the look of Nebula until GPN came on the scene. Now, what GPN did in the early days, he came up with, I suppose you can call them like generalised, like um, Nebula skins that you could import into your Nebula repository. So if you kind of go on like, um, what, I'm in Windows, okay? So if you kind of go on like my computer or whatever it is and I kind of go into my hard drive, my C drive, there will be a Nebula repository folder. And basically in a nutshell, any changes that you make will be in that Nebula repository folder. Now the great thing about GPN skins is that they work with every single Nebula library. So as you can see, he has a variety of skins. So again, you kind of got Neve style, API style, um, classic styles, just loads of different styles, loads of different colours, so you can kind of pick your own kind of GUI to taste. Now what I'm going to show you is how genuinely simple it is to change a Nebula skin. This is really, really simple. I've unzipped them and then the first step that you have to do is you take those skins and what you do is you go into your Nebula repository file, copy those skins into your Nebula skins folder. So that's your first step. Then from there, what you've got to do is you've got to pick the libraries that you want to change the skin of. So how about first we go to some like stock uh, Acoustica compressors. So we'll go to the, the Boeing 747 compressor. So I know that's the one I'm going to pick. Now the easiest way for him to do this is to go into your skins folder. And then from there, all you've got to do is copy the name of the file that you want to copy over. You go into your properties, you will then go into the library that you want to change the skin of, you'll right click it and you'll open it as like um, a Word document or a notepad document or anything where you can change the text because from there basically what you're doing is you are telling Nebula which file skin it is looking for to load. So I will delete the text, I'll then replace that with the name of the file of the skin that I'm wanting to replace, all I have to do is close it, save. And then when I go back into Nebula and I then go back into that Boeing 747, double click it, there you go, skin is loaded. And again, just to show you how simple that is, just in case you maybe got lost there, we'll do it again. So exact same thing, we'll follow the exact same procedure. We'll get the files from the folder. I'll then unzip them to my desktop, stick them in the JPN skins folder. I'll then go to the Nebula repository file, go into the skins folder. I'll then copy those skin files into the skins folder. We'll choose another stock Nebula compressor. So we'll choose the 4K one. And then from there, we will go and choose which skin we want to choose. I'll just pick it like a random one here. So I've picked that one, I've copied it. We'll then go into the properties section of the Nebula repository folder, we'll then find this funky fat 4K compressor, we'll then right click it, open it as a Word document, and then it's exact same procedure, we'll cut the file name, replace it to the skin file that we want it to load, close it, save it, and then from there you go back into your Nebula, you click on that compressor, and boom, there you go, as simple as that, you have your own skin, you've picked it, 
Nebula knows which skin it's loading, and as you can see, all of the parameters are in the skin. Obviously, there are some parameters that you can't use, and that's a great thing about JPN skins, is that he's gave you enough parameters to ensure that you'll never be short. So there might be some parameters you can't use, but all the parameters that you need to use, you can use in the plugin. And again, you've got still got all the numerical values. Now, obviously, the third-party developers um, kind of get custom skins um, from JPN. So again, you'll notice on Tim Petherick plugins, they're the same kind of basic layout, but they'll maybe have some other graphics and stuff that maybe Tim's asked them to put in, or Alex has asked them to put in, or Tim Cupwise has asked them to put in. Now, JPN is not the only guy that makes Nebula skins. He was for a very, very, very long time, until the newcomer came along, which is Max. Uh, you'll notice that Max has commented on, I think, my other Nebula videos, and other few Nebula videos as well. Max has a Patreon page, uh, and you can get all of his skins via Patreon. Now, the way his Patreon page works is that you can sign up and support him and you can get skins before anybody else. So, for example, Max has got like um, a custom skin for the Tim Petherick RA6. If you are a Patreon member and you pay into the Patreon, you have access to that skin. If you're not a member of the Patreon, you might have to wait another month or two. Depends when Max then decides to release them for free. Now, what Max does is Max goes out of his way to try and make the skins look more like the hardware. Now a good example of this would be uh, Tim Petherick's 1176, the U76. Max has made like a custom skin so it looks more like the URI uh, 1176, so it looks more like the hardware. Now in terms of like the history of how Max got into it, when I was speaking to him, he was telling me kind of like that he was getting a little bit frustrated in terms of when he was using Nebula and he felt that kind of the layout of some of the libraries could be a little bit better and from a workflow element he felt he could make them a little bit better obviously make them look a little bit more like the hardware but from a workflow aspect he was like no what i'll just make my own skins now the difference with max's skins is that you not only install them differently and um, what max has done is max kind of makes up his own program what you'll notice as a nebula user you have to load nebula and you have to load the library within nebula what he's done is he's been able to create a separate program so when you kind of look at your plugins it's like um the instance is already in your plugin folder so instead of going n4 into the library i'll be like n4 like opto32 or like n4 um, ssl bus compressor almost exactly like the way that the third party developers that work with acoustical audio i.e db quadro london acoustics and sim drops um, you can load an entire instance and it'll load as one instance instead of going into Nebula and finding all the folders. He was able to find a way around that. Now, there's a certain way to it. So what I'll do is I'll show you very quickly kind of how he does that. Now, the way in which this is done is very, very important. You've got to follow this to the letter, okay? So you get your files, you'll stick your files in the folders that he tells you to do. There'll be some files that will be replaced. Now, for example, like with Tim Petrick and stuff like that, um, what he's doing is he is replacing the files themselves okay so they're the exact same names but you're overwriting them so then what happens is you'll put all the files in the folders and this is where it's different from gpn right you go into setup and then what you need to do is you need to like select the program and then you'll decide if you like which kind of file format you want it vst vst2 and um, vst3 ax if it's pro tools so for me vst3 and um, ax and then what that'll do is that'll create a separate instance. So when you're in Pro Tools, you can just go into Pro Tools, click into it, and then the entire instance loads it. Now, the issue with um, Nebula's like standard N4 uh, reverb libraries is that it's very, very cumbersome. It's a one big folder, and you've got to go reverb and go down the list and select it, and then you've got to like do your tweaks. And from a workflow aspect, it's just not very nice to use. So what Max done was Max took every single reverb that they had in that reverb folder and stuck it into one skin. So using Max's reverb skin, you load the reverb skin up. And again, the advantage of Max's skin is that it is a separate N4 instance. Again, so you can just go in your plugin folder and your DAW, you'll see it like N4 reverbs, click into it, and then all the reverbs are there and they're just one click of a button. And you, and what's even better is that he took the time to tell you which each reverb is. And in a nutshell, what he's done is he separated everything. He's told you exactly what everything is. It's in a set order. You know what it is. You know what type of reverb it is. And it's really, really easy to use. The controls are all there. Again, really simple to use. One control set. And it's just probably, it's probably the pinnacle of his work. I think it's fantastic. He's a very, very talented guy, but so is JPN. What I don't want people to do is, like a lot of people, I think, 
get kind of blindsided a little bit by obviously the the flashiness of Max's skins and stuff, and people might look at JPN stuff and go, oh, that's maybe a bit basic, but there's nothing wrong with basic, okay? I think, uh, what's it, is it skewmorphism? Have I, have I said it right? Skewmorphism or whatever it is. Loads of people don't like that, right? I, I am a little bit of, <laughs> of a fiend um, for like very cool looking GUIs and them looking like the hardware and stuff. But loads of people just like really, really, really simple, easy to use GUIs. The great thing with JPN is that you can change every single Nebula library, all the stock ones, any Nebula library you have. All of JPN skins will work and there are tons of different ones you can choose from. And then when it comes to third party developers, if you kind of want... If you kind of want that skewmorphism or whatever it's called, you can go with Max and kind of get kind of more of like an artistic kind of hardware style skin. And also remember guys, um, the great thing about JPN's skins is that remember in Nebula you can load two instances. So if you think about the Opto32 where Tim is combining the LA2A and LA3A, because you can get two skins, JPN put like an LA2A style skin and an LA3A style skin, which you can change via the edit button. Again, you can um, save presets via meta plugin and stuff like that. So whenever I load a meta plugin preset um, of like the LA2A setting or the LA3A setting, I've got the corresponding skin to go with it. So it's also so it's a really, really great tool that you can use as well. So there you go, guys. That's as much as I know so far about um, Nebula skins and kind of like the history behind um, Nebula skins. They're really easy to do. Um, you just need to make sure that you follow the instructions, okay? All the links you need to know are in the description down below. In terms of Max, if you want to go out and support Max, again, consider joining his Patreon campaign. In terms of Zhao, JPN, um, he's got a separate Facebook page. Honestly, he's made up a separate Facebook page um, for every single one of his skins. So all the details are on there. Again, all the links will be in the description. And just remember, guys, these two skin makers do all of this for free and they do it all in their own time. So show a little bit of love like the video, consider subscribing. In terms of the Nebula series, I'm still kind of thinking ideas, spitballing ideas back and forth um, with other Nebula geeks. Um, just remember guys, there is a Nebula Facebook page. It is like the Nebula nerds or whatever it is. I call it Nebula geeks because we are. We're all Nebula geeks. It's a great, great community guys. Honestly, it's a fantastic community. Really geeky stuff and everybody's supportive and you can find out more and more and more info. And um, if, actually, if you want to know, if you're ever stuck or if um, you ever want to know any more about the skins, then uh, JPN and Max, very friendly guys. It's like pop them a message, send them a DM or whatever, and they'll get back in touch with you. Honestly, they're great, great friendly guys with just a passion for doing this. Okay, so guys, my name is Paul Third. This has been Mixing Wednesdays, and this is how you customise your own Nebula skins. Have a great weekend, guys, and I'll see you next week.